Boracay in the Philippines is often named one of the best islands in the world, but it comes at a cost, overcrowded and no privacy. Back in 2018, Boracay was called a cesspool. The island was shut down for six months so it could recover from the over-tourism. But has the island changed and should you visit it? Good morning and we are back in the Philippines. I'm so excited to be here. This morning we're heading straight to the beach. It looks like a pretty good day. The sun is shining and it's rainy season, so really good sign. <laughs> pretty wet last night, wasn't it? Yeah, it rained a lot. Look at the sea here in Boracay. It just looks incredible. So we've just come down to White Beach. This is the most popular beach on the whole island of Boracay. It literally stretches from one end of the island to the other. However, we've come right down to the south end of the beach because most of the resorts and all the hotels are right up the other end. And so if you come down this side, it's a lot more local feel. There's not as many tourists. It feels more chilled out like, yeah. rather than near like the mall and everything up there. It can be a little bit chaotic up there. We'll show you that maybe a bit later. <laughs> One thing we'd heard about Boracay before we come is that the sand is supposed to be really, really soft. But we've been to Balabac where the sand is literally incredible, like Maldives. And it's rained right now, so it's really hard to tell, but it is pretty good here. Maybe not quite Balabac level, but this sand is beautiful still. And obviously when it dries up, it's going to be splendid. So one of the things I was not expecting when I came to Boracay is that there would be seaweed literally all over the beach. But I've actually read online that this is actually a good thing and it happens every few times a year and it makes the sand softer and it's really good just for the health of the ocean and the, and the beach. So not complaining, but yeah, it's a little bit different to some of the photos you see on Instagram, you know. And one of the things they've done here, in 2018 they big, did a big renovation for six months, they closed the island and they've made some incredible changes which has made this island just so much more manageable for the massive amounts of tourists who come here. And I'll talk about that a bit later in the video. And there's also a lot of sellers that are just like trying to sell you stuff all the time like sunglasses, phone cases, activities. No, thank you. I got some. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I've already got one of those. And as you can tell, there are a lot of sellers, but I guess that's just the Philippines and they're always very nice and very happy. Kind of unlike other places, so yeah. I don't mind it too much. You can have a bit of a joke with them and they're just yeah. having a good time. Because right. here in the Philippines, everyone speaks such good English. I love it. So we've been here for a few days and we found a great little breakfast spot that's a little bit cheaper than some of the places on the beachfront, so we're going to head there. But in general, Boracay is a lot more expensive than other parts of the Philippines. So just something to keep in account if you are coming here and you're more on a budget. Nonnies and these smoothie bowls are insane. I think they're about 360 pesos each, which is a lot better than some of the other places we've tried on this island. It looks so good. It's kind of like just a chocolate mousse, but a healthy one. It's so tasty. <laughs> Wanna to go to Tambisan Beach? Tambisan Beach? Yeah. But now Tambis Tambisan Beach is now the port now. Is it good for snorkeling there? Ah, uh, snorkeling? Yeah. Only here. Oh yeah? You want to go to a uh, highland hoping? The boat? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. So if you heard that conversation with the e-trike driver, he basically said that beach has now become like a, a port. So there's loads of boats, there's loads of people everywhere. And if you want to do proper snorkeling, then you actually need to go on a boat tour. Previously read reviews saying it was a really good snorkeling spot. So yeah, bit yeah. of a shame. Also, when we got the boat over to Boracay Island a few days ago, when we came into Tasbien Beach, the water looked so clear. So we were like, oh, it'd be perfect for snorkeling. I guess if there's a lot of boats there, there's not really space for snorkeling. Do you want to go to Puka Beach? Puka Beach? Yeah. How, how much yeah, is it? 300. 300. Are these the new e-trikes then? Do you have to charge these? Yes. Yeah. I use three batteries. So you charge a battery and then you can switch battery? Yeah. All right. Very expensive. Yeah. Is it more expensive on Boracay Island than other islands? Yeah, it's more expensive here. Ah, uh, yeah, because it's a small island maybe, yeah. It took us about 20 minutes to get here in that electric tricycle, which is not too bad, but it was longer than we thought. Let's go check this beach out. So there's quite a few markets here. It's definitely busier than I was expecting. Yeah, it kind of said online like, oh, this is a not touristy beach, but uh, it's, it's still touristy. Uh, seems like there's a lot of people. Okay, so on the actual beach, it is 
much less busier than the main white beach and to be fair it looks pretty beautiful the water is glowing it's so blue the sand might not be super soft like the other beach but i mean it's still super white and it's pretty beautiful out here if you want to escape the crowds of borokai definitely come up here onto the northern tip definitely not as wet wavy here as well everyone's trying to sell you these white clear kayaks maybe there's good snorkeling we will get back to Puka Beach, but I have something exciting to show you. How do you go from this to this using Wondershare Filmora 12? One of my favorite features in Filmora 12 is the AI audio stretcher, which allows me to expand any audio to any length I want. One of the problems I have when editing is constantly trying to find background music for my videos. But by using the AI audio stretcher, I can easily with one click and drag lengthen the music of my choice. If you wanted this wave sound to stretch over the drone footage using the audio stretcher, you can easily do this by lengthening the sound, creating more atmosphere in your videos, when usually you wouldn't have any sound for a drone shot. Another audio feature which Filmora has is music visualizers. And these react to sounds and music, so you can add this to a video to recreate like a phone call or just add extra visuals to your video. For me, the AI audio stretcher is such a great tool and you've got to try it out on your next video. When you're sharing your next video, remember to tag Filmora in your post for a chance to be featured on the Filmora social media channels. I highly recommend downloading Filmora now and unlock your creative potential with the audio visualizers and the AI audio stretch features to take your videos to the next level. Now let's get back to Puka Beach. It's like midday here on Puka Beach and we found ourselves this little cave to hide from the sun in because yesterday we did get a little bit burnt and Joel has gone a little bit overboard with the sun. Yeah I mean I don't want to get burnt and I thought it looked kind of cool. I think I did it better though. Oh better, you look like you're in the military. Yeah! <laughs> look at this water! It's so good! It does, and I've just found a paddle in the water. So I'm going to take that out. It does look incredibly blue. Oh, it's so refreshing. It's crystal. It is crystal clear. <laughs> Guys, I've just seen my face in the camera lens, and I apologise for how white this sun cream is. And it is reef safe sun cream, so if we're swimming here, it doesn't matter. It's natural. So yeah, we're not destroying the fishies. We love the fishies. We love the fish. All right, time to go for a little snorkel. What are they? Just like crackers. Only one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, snack not looking too good now. Sandy snack. I don't mind a bit of sand. Got some extra crunch on them. Vinegar? 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 Go on, then, don't go on there. It's good. Spicy? It's this good. Mm. <laughs> yeah, come on, eh? Where? In there or? Okay. What is it? Spicy. 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 Vinegar. Spicy vinegar. Yeah. Spicy vinegar. It's a bit of a suspicious liquid in there, but <laughs> it's quite nice. So let's talk about what happened in 2018 here in Boracay. So back then there was six months of closure of Boracay, so no tourists could actually come to this island and they basically did loads of work around the island to basically make it capable to take loads of tourists. So the first thing they did along the beachfront, the main white sand beach, is they moved all the buildings back because they were right next to the sea. So they moved it back maybe 10, 15 meters. So now they've got a long walkway all the way up White Beach and it's actually really nice, especially in the evenings. It gets pretty busy and it's kind of a bit more of an atmosphere. One of the big things which the old president said is that this island was like a cesspool and that's because they were dumping all the sewage from all the hotels straight into the ocean so it wasn't actually like very pleasant to swim in the ocean probably not very healthy either but one of the big things they did was basically do all the sewage properly and so it's now you know gotten rid of properly there's actually a limit to how many people who can come daily to Boracay but it's not really kept to and just so many tourists are coming here which I guess is a good thing for the locals because there's obviously lots of money through the island but honestly it gets so busy and it's quite overwhelming if you've been to other parts of the Philippines. 
bar, you know, I'll need it. How have you preferred this beach to White Beach over there? I honestly much prefer it. I think it's so much more calmer and chiller. There's like these beautiful rocks in the background. But there's still really quite amazing. a few people here as well. But now we're going to head back to the White Beach, the main beach where everyone floods for sunset. Hopefully it's going to be a good one. So we're just walking through Dumal, which is basically where there's loads of shops, loads of little markets and restaurants, cafes, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's following us. I just saw a massive beetle, but now we're on our way to the beach for sunset because White Beach is like known for famous sunsets. I'm alright boss. We are right next to the mall, so this is like the busiest area of White Beach. Look at everyone. It's actually crazy. I mean, you can't argue that this island is beautiful, especially at sunset. I mean, just look at it behind us. This is Boracay at its finest. We've got ourselves a Boracay sunset. Whoa. We also had an amazing sunset our first night here. For some reason, it seems to happen every single day here in Boracay, and it's probably one of the reasons most people come here. The sunsets are super special. We've just come to dinner at Little Taj, which is just off the main like beachfront strip, and it's supposed to be really, really good Indian food, so we're really excited to see how it is. We may have also ordered some cocktails. Yes, it was happy enough, so we couldn't help ourselves. <laughs> Food here in Boracay is such a big thing. There's so many incredible restaurants. You almost feel like all the good chefs just come here to Boracay and make incredible food. So try a few different restaurants, have a look up because there's so many different cuisines and stuff to try. definitely tell there is quite an atmosphere here at night in Boracay. Every other restaurant has like live music, bands going off, music, it does feel very good and obviously the food which we just had was incredible. So let's talk about our opinions on Boracay and why you shouldn't visit. Boracay has been super hyped up for us. After traveling the Philippines for like three months, everyone was like, you must visit Boracay. It's one of the best islands in the Philippines. But we have been disappointed. Personally, I think we prefer other islands in the Philippines like Siagao or Siquijor, where it's a lot more adventure and very laid back and it's not super busy. And as we mentioned earlier in the video, it is a lot more expensive than other parts of the Philippines. In Siagao, literally things were half the price in terms of food, tours. We felt like Boracay was more aimed at people on vacation rather than backpacking. And in my opinion, I wouldn't recommend going there if you're on like a month trip of the Philippines. It also felt like there wasn't a lot to do on the island itself. A lot of it was just excursions and activities off the island or on the water. And they were often quite expensive and not really in our backpacker budget. But if you're on holiday, they are, would be pretty fun. And if you are a big foodie, there are so many different restaurants and great food to try. Just on the more expensive scale compared to other parts of the Philippines. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video where we're in another country. See you then.